Hello and welcome. You've joined us on Business Lunch. I'm Nisha Podar and with me is Sonia Shinoi. Sonia, good afternoon. Markets are in the red today. It's uh, the frontline indices which are down more than about a quarter percentage points. So Nifty 50 down about 23 odd points and Sensex is just about 140 odd points down. It's a mid cap space which is on the flat line. So outperforming the key indices and it's Bank Nifty which is taking more of a drubbing. It's also because of HDFC twins which are the prime draggers today and Reliance Industries is also weak. As far as the market breadth is concerned it is uh, more or less flattish and crisscross lines when it comes to the breadth because the mid caps are clearly outperforming Sonia. Oh yes in fact you know I was just looking at the contribution plate and if you look at it the nifty is down about 23 odd points out of which 20 points is coming from just HDFC. So yes as you mentioned the HDFC twins clearly dragging the markets this afternoon that's the contribution plate for you. And the rest coming in from HDFC Bank, Reliance, of course, offset by a big move in the IT names today, Infosys, TCS, HCL Tech, the big gainers of the year and uh, still gaining in the market so far. But the big deal that took place overnight, HUL clinches the deal to buy GSK's consumer healthcare business in India. Brokerages are quite positive on HUL, although the stock has come off a tad bit. Mangalam is here to tell us more on that. Mangalam, over to you. That's right. The stock's down uh, from the highs of the day, currently pro probably on account of profit taking and it's sitting at a record high any which way. Brokerage is by and large positive. The consensus view is that this deal is EPS accretive to the tune of anywhere between 5 to 7 percent. Some of the brokerages have upgraded their rating on the stock. So something like a Deutsche Bank has upgraded the stock to a buy with a target price upwards of 2100. At the same time, uh, uh, the, uh, the city brokerage believes that uh, uh, you have an EPS growth of anywhere between 3.5 to 4 percent on account of uh, this deal. Philip Capital says that the big surprise and the big positive surprise was the share swap deal given uh, HUL's equity valuation which is higher than uh, GSK consumer and which gives uh, the company a value arbitrage or the power to buy a company with uh, a, a higher bargaining power given its equity value. So they've upgraded the rating and they have a higher target price uh, at around 2160 and finally Jefferies believes that uh, they see a potential of 6 to 9 percent EPS growth but uh, the one concern is they will like to watch out for execution given it th this is uncharted territory for HUL. They maintain their hold rating on the stock given that valuations leave no room for any error. All right, Mangalam, thanks so much for getting us all the brokerage views coming in on that large transaction. A lot needs to be unfolding over the next few months on this one. Of course, it's a merger process which will take a year and uh, it's the long-term capital gains for the investors as well as GSK that needs to be watched out for very closely and also brand was sold separately. That's also another factor on our radar. Let's also hear out what the management of both the companies had to say on this deal and how it may makes perfect sense for each of these companies. This is a great deal for GSK PLC shareholders, but it also importantly uh, GSK consumer healthcare shareholders here in India who are getting a premium. Uh, and also uh, Unilever and Hindustan Unilever is a fantastic company. Clearly here in India they have a very famous heritage uh, and fantastic distribution capabilities. So we're delighted having owned these brands for over a hundred, almost a hundred years uh, to divest them to Unilever and Hindustan Unilever and we hope they can take them forward for the next hundred years. We will increase penetration with special focus on rural markets and emerging channels and expand our offerings to the fast growing premium segment. There will also be focus on looking at future ready formats in line with consumer trends. Our direct coverage is a 3x GSK and our tech-led capabilities will be a growth multiplier. On the cost side, we see significant benefits across the value chain and the transactions will be margins and EP is accretive to HUL. Our F&R business post the proposed merger will cross the 10,000 crore mark, making us one of the largest players in the country in the F&R space. We expect the transaction to be completed by December 2019, subject to necessary regulatory approval. Okay, that's the big deal that took place. In fact, a lot of investors quite bullish on HUL. The stock has seen a big run-up over the last few months. We spoke to Ram De Agarwal, the co-founder of Motila Urswal Financial Services. Listen in to what he had to say on HUL's deal with GSK. We'll come back. Now, we've seen one of the biggest deals happening yesterday. So that also opens up opportunity to relook at uh, HUL. 
All right, so that was about the large transaction, but let's focus on the corporate governance issues, and that has plagued many countries, uh, many companies in the past few months. In fact, Sun Pharma is the next one on our radar, and that stock is under pressure even today. After an hour-long con call that Sun Pharma's uh, promoter himself had given yesterday, so the management uh, tried to clarify on the whistleblower allegations, but the stock gives up morning gains today. Sonia, what's really happening? What were the key takeaways and what's really the concern in the market's mind when it comes to the corporate governance issues? Well, absolutely. You know, uh, first the positive was that Dilip Shangvi himself was on the call and a couple of key statements that he made, he uh, spoke about the highest level of corporate governance uh, that he assured investors of. He also said that he's ready to make any ch changes in the business transactions in order to increase transparency in the business. He spoke a lot about Sudhir Walia's role. He said that Sudhir Walia has no operational involvement in uh, Sun Pharma. In fact, he had advises only on strategy and sometimes on finance. However, the bone of contention really is a lack of clarity on that 2200 crore loan that was given out. Remember, in FY18, Sun Pharma gave out a loan of 2200 crores to non-related third parties. The management did mention that this is a business transaction and the loans were given as a part of the pharma business. However, the street is not very, uh, you know, happy. A lot of unanswered questions because of which there's an overhang on the stock. A uh, city came out with a note where they said that the whistleblower's uh, report is a 150-page report and they need more clarity on contents of the report and a potential bearing of the business. Until they get more clarity, it will continue to remain an overhang on the stock. Um, Jefferies has a whole rating. They say that while most issues appear dated, it may still remain an overhang on the stock and the um, management responses have has left the market with mixed feelings. So clearly, some unanswered questions, and that's the reason the stock is under pressure. But let's listen in to what the management had to say at the conference call last evening. Sun Pharma's relationship with AML is on arm's length basis. As investors have expressed a concern regarding this arrangement, we are in the process of discussing various other options for undertaking domestic formulation business. We are open to the idea of changing this distribution if based on our interaction with investors, we get a feeling that that is what will make them comfortable. Another issue pertains to Sun Pharma lending some money to four individuals without security. This is also 20 years old, which happened in 95-96. The amount of money involved also was very small, a few lakh rupees, and was fully recovered. It's also pertinent to note that these four individuals were investigated by SEBI. The appeals tribunal in 2002 has actually given a ruling in favor of these four individuals. All right, so that's the clarification coming in uh, from the management of Sun Pharma, and the stock is still down, close to about 1%. Let's also hear out Ramde Agarwal's view on Sun Pharma. They're all very old issues, you know. I, I believe they're all dated uh, some yeah, 10 years, yeah. 15 years, those kind of things. So to that extent, you have to give discount also to... And yet you can't get away from the fact that uh, how things were conducted and all. So I think... This is one of the greatest company which has, I mean, last 20 years in wealth creation studies, uh, I mean, something which has come up from 1,000, 2,000 crores to become two and a half lakh crores kind of company. It is one of the leaders in the global generics out of India and uh, in India, clearly a leader. So it's an amazing uh, corporate story. I think this kind of uh, glitches come in any company. So I think, I would think that uh, one should, uh, one should very, uh, I mean, a great company in a, kind of a little, little fix, a difficult spot. But it is not a something which can uh, bring down the uh, this thing. I mean, there is nothing to do with the current operations and, uh, you know, financials and things like that. All right, so he believes that it is purely a, a corporate governance issue, but the financials of the company look pretty good. That's Sun Pharma, though, it's still down about one percent Let's take a break on that note. On the other side of the break, we'll get you a slice of our exclusive conversation with S. Ramesh, the chairman of the CBIC.